In section 9.8, we'll be focusing on the Pythagorean theorem and space figures. After watching this video, you will be able to apply the Pythagorean theorem to solid figures or to three-dimensional figures. Let's start off by taking a look at the rectangular solid. You could almost think of this like a Kleenex box. So this rectangular solid has a couple of different things that you have to re recognize. The first thing we want to think about is LPSM. If we take a look at LPSM here, that's that rectangle in the front, and this is called a face of the figure. If we take a look at this figure, there are a total of six faces around. Now let's discuss LP. If we take a look at LP, LP is right here. An LP is what we call an edge of the figure. Let's go ahead and figure out how many edges we have. And sometimes you can use a highlighter to determine this. So I already highlighted one edge. That's one, that'd be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So we have a total of twelve edges in this figure. Now QM isn't even drawn in here, so I'm going to go ahead and connect those two points, Q and M. And if we connect those two points, what we actually end up creating is a diagonal of the solid figure. And we can draw a total of four diagonals. So we constructed QM, those are opposite vertices. We could construct LR right here, PN right there, and then finally OS. So we could construct a total of four diagonals. Now to find the length of one of those red diagonals, all we need are the dimensions. So if we know the dimensions, the length, the width, in the height of our figure, we can find the length of the diagonal. And we could find this by taking, I'm going to say D equals for diagonal equals the square root of the length squared plus width squared plus height squared. So we could square our dimensions, add them up, and then take the square root of that sum. So let's take a look at the first example down here, number one. It says a rectangular prism has dimensions 5, 7, and 10, and we want to find the length of the diagonal. So they gave us the dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. So the length is 5, the width is 7, and the height is 10. So we could find the diagonal by taking the square root of the length squared plus width squared plus height squared, as we saw above. So we're going to take 5 squared plus 7 squared plus 10 squared. Let's go ahead and figure out what we got there. So we'll get 25 plus 49 plus 100, which gives us radical 174. All right, let's see if we can reduce that further. Let's go into A quad in our calculators and pull up the program, which I'm doing right now. And let's simplify that radical. So let's type in radical 174. Oh, and actually, it's already simplified. So we don't even have to simplify that any further. So our final answer is radical 174. Let's move back up to the regular square pyramid. So we could think about this. It's like the pyramids in Egypt, right? So we have a base here, and then we have this top vertex, and then we have all of the edges meeting at that single point. So ABCD, if we take a look at that, ABCD is on the bottom. That is going to be a square base because we know that it's a regular square pyramid. So that means that the base of this pyramid is a square. E is this top point right here. We call that the vertex of our pyramid. Now let's take a look at EF. 
EF is going to be the actual height of our pyramid, or we can call it the altitude, okay? So EF is going to be an altitude of the pyramid since it goes from the vertex and then it meets the base and it forms a right angle with that base so that's our altitude and then finally eg it's very important not to mix up the two so eg i'll highlight here in red eg is what we call a slant height and it makes sense because it's slanted when you look at the diagram and it's actually the height of one of the triangles or the altitude of one of the faces. So that triangle EBC here, EG is the altitude of that triangle. So actually when we draw in EG, if you want to look up here, we're going to form right angles with that side BC. Let's take a look at the first example. So here it says the perimeter of the square base is 120. Okay, so now we're working with a square base, we know the perimeter is 120, so we could take that and divide it by 4 to find the length of each side of the base. So that means that each side of the base has a length of 30. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark a few of those sides. They tell us that the altitude is 8, so now we do have to recall the altitude comes from the vertex to the base, it's that yellow segment right there, and it forms a right angle with that base. So that's 8, so let's go ahead and mark that. And we want to find the slant height. So the slant height here is listed right there, that red segment that we want to find. Well, since when the altitude hits the base, it's going to hit right in the middle of that square, if one side of the base is 30, then from here to here, if you want to look at me tracing this here, is 15. It's going to be half of it. And if you can see, we have a right triangle that we're working with. So that's an 8, 15, 17 right triangle. So that means that our slant height is actually 17 units. One other thing I want to mention really quickly, let's move back up to the top here. The look at EB. EB is what we call a lateral edge. And I don't think that we had that in our notes. So if you can please add that in now, keep in mind. The lateral edge is going to be from one vertex of the base to the top vertex. So EB is an example of a lateral edge. AE is another one. ED is another one. And EC is a lateral edge as well. Make sure you know the difference between a lateral edge, a slant height, and an altitude. We'll pick back up with the second video in just a moment.